Life Real Crime is a true crime podcast brought to you by Woody Overton and executive producer Toby Templey. It's Woody Overton, your host of Real Life, Real Crime, the podcast. I'm here today to tell you about a new podcast. And if you're looking for a new true crime podcast that'll give you the chills, check out Dr. Death, Season 3, Miracle Man. It is a terrifying true story of Dr. Palio Machiarini, a charming surgeon who left a trail of bodies behind him. This season begins with a storybook romance between Benita Alexandria and Dr. Palio Machiarini. Dr. Marcherini was a world-famous Italian surgeon pioneering a groundbreaking new treatment that could save thousands of lives. They traveled the world together, lavish vacations, romantic getaways, and it wasn't long before he proposed to her and excitedly promised the Clintons, Obamas, and even John Legend would be at their wedding. What Bedina didn't know then was that her new fiancé, would take her to the center of an international medical scandal that would shock the world. Dr. Paolo Macherini had lied about everything, and six people would die before she would uncover that he wasn't the miracle man he made himself out to be. I'm about to play you a preview of Dr. Death, Season 3, Miracle Man. But while you're listening, make sure to follow Dr. Death, Season 3, Miracle Man on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening. Or you can listen right now by subscribing to Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts or the Wondery app. It was the second night of Benita Alexander's romantic getaway in Moscow. And so far, everything had been perfect. You know, the typical beautiful hotel, the the tour guide, the, the everything over the top, the beautiful dinners... He often on these trips would give me more jewelry. He was always giving me beautiful jewelry. They'd spent the day sightseeing and shopping and had just settled down for dinner at the Cafe Pushkin restaurant. The man who had swept her off her feet seven months earlier was sitting across the table. This man knows exactly how attractive and good-looking he is, and he knows he looks like George Clooney. They'd only been seeing each other for a short time, but Benita knew she was already in love. He was handsome, caring, and successful. In fact, he was here on a business trip, a new clinical trial. He'd invited Benita along, but she almost didn't make it. For months after the surgery, I'm back and forth to the doctor constantly, and they can't get rid of this infection. He'd invited Benita along, but she almost didn't make it. Just a few weeks earlier, she'd had surgery and gotten an infection. But after some antibiotics, things seemed to be getting better. Besides, she really wanted to see Moscow. And then the infection cleared up enough that my doctor said, you're fine, you're okay to travel. But now, at dinner, it was clear something was very wrong. And I started having horrible pain, um, like piercing pain. At first, she tried to tough it out, hoping to make it through the dessert, but this was just too much. I remember squeezing Paula's hand under the table, and I just look at him, and I say, my love, something's wrong. A look of concern flashed across Paolo's face. Everything's going to be okay, he said. He got up from the table, threw down some cash, and grabbed her coat. And I could barely walk, barely get in the taxi. 
they made it back to their hotel room. And he said, lie down on the bed. Benita quickly pulled off her clothes as best she could so he could see the wound. He looked at the incision and he looked at me and he said, do you trust me? And I just looked at him and I said, get me another glass of wine. Paolo gave a soft smile and then walked to the mini fridge. He pulled out a bottle of wine, then filled a glass to the brim and handed it to her. Which I promptly slugged and I lay down and he said, where are your scissors? I had these travel scissors that um, I was using to cut the gauze that I was covering the incision with. And I said, they're in the bathroom. And he goes in the bathroom and he gets my travel scissors and he used peroxide or something, whatever he had, to quote-unquote sterilize them. He came back over to her, looked her in the eyes. And he said, do you trust me? And I just nodded my head. And he took those scissors and he plunged them into my incision. The pain was unlike anything she'd felt. Benita has a high pain threshold, but for a second, she thought she was going to black out. One hand was gripping the bed, and the other was holding onto Paolo's shoulder. Paolo told her that he had released the pus from her infection, and it would help her heal. She believed him because she trusted him. She wasn't the only one. Fellow surgeons trusted Paolo. Patients trusted Paolo. But this dashing, globe-trotting, miracle-working doctor would betray them all. I believe in miracles, I believe in magic, I believe in love. And it just seemed like this is going to be good. Of course, why not? Uh, and we saw more and more lies in these manuscripts. Whoever said love is blind wasn't kidding. Follow Dr. Death Season 3, Miracle Man, on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening right now. Or you can listen early and ad-free by subscribing to Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts or in the Wondery app. Real Crime is a true crime podcast brought to you by Woody Overton and executive producer Toby Templey.